Alrighty guys, Chippy12 here with my top 10 cube list for M14. And of course M14 is being released tomorrow. Well not released, but the pre-release is tomorrow. So these are just a few cards you should probably pick up. In my opinion, I've been doing a bit of research on them and playtesting and such. So yeah, I'm going to start out with a few honorable mentions. We have Banisher Priest, which is 1 and 2 white for 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. So a nice little piece of removal for 3 drop in white. Didn't quite make the 10 slot. Uh, as well, another honorable mention is Ogre Battle Driver. Nice piece for late game aggressive decks with um, plus 2 plus 0 for each creature that enters the battlefield and haste to it. So pretty nice touch. Unfortunately, it doesn't give haste and plus 2 to plus 0 to itself, which would make it a lot better. And since there's not as much token in red, not quite as good as some other stuff. So starting off with number 10 now, we have Fiend Slayer Paladin. So it's 1 and 2 white for a first strike lifelink. Can't be the target of spells, black, red, black or red spells your opponent's control. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, a lot of the cards on here, I'm of course doing non-reprints, but uh, so only new cards, so there's quite slim pickings for what I could choose out of them, but um, a lot of these cards don't make quite make the 360 slot. Some of them are 540 to uh, 630, but yeah, so not, not all that great stuff, but this guy um, can't be the target of red, black or red spells your opponent's control. It gives them protection from a lot of the removal spells out there. 2-2, uh, two, two, First Strike, and Lifelink are some pretty good abilities for this guy. Just the First Strike on a 2-2 two, two is always good with a lot of 2 uh, toughness in the cube. And the Lifelink's also a nice touch. So, not a bad attacker. Anyway, moving on to number 9, we have Archangel of Thune. 3-2 uh, and two white for a Flying life, Lifelink. Whenever you gain life, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each creature you control. A uh, very nice finisher for the uh, white token decks or white green token decks. Uh, just to pump up all your tokens and then just swing in for the win the next turn. If everything goes according to plan, of course. And with the flying and lifelink, you only gain three life for it unless you can pump it. But with this ability, it'll put a plus one plus one counter on each of your creatures, which is going to be pretty sweet. Um, next up, number 8, we have Garut Collar of Beasts. It's 4 and 2 green for 4 loyalty. First ability is reveal the top 5 cards of your library. Put all creatures revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. That's a pretty nice ability for some good card advantage in green, especially in some creature heavy ramp decks where you can get this guy out possibly by turn 4 or 5 and then, uh, be able to get some big creatures in your hand right off the bat. Second ability is minus three. You may put a green creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So that's pretty nice, especially after you use his first ability, or if you're able to get him out early and play a six or seven drop on turn five or four. That's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, not too bad. Probably one of his... These two are definitely his best abilities, of course. Not sure which one I like better just because it really depends on the game you're playing right then. But um, then his last ability is minus seven. You get an emblem with whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a creature card, put it on the battlefield, and shuffle your library. Obviously a very good ability, although not going to get up to uh, seven very often, especially if you're using the second ability. He'd just be too much of a target by then, and in cube he's going to die pretty quickly. Next up, number seven, we have Zathrid Necromancer. This guy is two and a black, and whenever he or another human creature enters the battlefield under your control, or no, whenever it dies, sorry, you get to put a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. So he's kind of a four power for three guy, except for the fact that it's when he dies. Um, anyway, it depends... Usually black-white will be the best combination for him just because white has a lot more humans than black does, but um, 
Uh, also very good in the zombie archetype to get a bunch more zombies out there. And he just replaces himself when he dies, which is pretty cool. Uh, number six, we have Liliana's Reaver, which is two and two black for a 4-3 death touch. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card and you put a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. Uh, so again, it puts one on tapped. Also good in the zombie archetype. Um, it's a 4-3 death touch that they're forced to block, which can be pretty rough sometimes unless they want to discard a card and give you a creature. So against a token build, it's not as good because obviously they're going to have a lot of tokens that they can block with. But if you're able to stick a sword or something on this guy, then he gets through every turn for 6, and they... In addition to the swords abilities, they also have to discard a card and you get a creature. So, pretty sweet if you can get that combination, and not too bad for a four drop in black. Uh, number five, we have Elvish Mystic. Now, this may be a surprise to some people because it's just like Fintorn Elves and Llanowar Elves, of course, another elf that taps to add green to your mana pool. But these guys are really handy in cube, and a lot of other cubers like it as well, just because anytime you can get green mana or any color mana early it's definitely good kickstart and um, yeah so a lot of people are going to be running all three in their cubes even at 360 cards and I think it's definitely a big possibility for something you can include in your cube. Uh, next up number four I believe we have Shadowborn Demon this guy is 3 and 2 black for a 5-6 flyer. When he enters the battlefield, destroy target non-demon creature. Which is a really sweet ability. Uh, just to be able to get rid of any other huge creatures that you just can't deal with right at that moment. For turn 5, a 5 drop, 5-6 five, is just pretty ridiculous. Especially with flying. It does have the one drawback at the beginning of your upkeep. If there are fewer than 6 creature cards in your graveyard, sacrifice creature. Which, if you have something like Bitter Blossom out, or one of the previous token generators, or Grave Titan, or something like that, not too bad. But it's always bad to have something like that, obviously, since it's a drawback. But uh, I think it's reasonable to be able to get out a 5 6 flyer turn 5 that also destroys a creature your opponent controls and just like saves you for a turn. Pretty nice. So, number 3. We have Colonian Hydra, 3 and 2 green for a turn 1, 4, 4, trample, and whenever it attacks, double the number of plus 1, plus 1 counters on each creature you control. Most of the time, this guy is just going to be affecting himself, but by turn 2, which is, well, the second turn he's in play, I mean, which is turn 6, usually, or turn 4, depending on how high you are on ramp, but he can be an 8-8 eight, eight, eight trample attacker by turn 6 most of the time, which is pretty nice, and he only gets bigger and bigger if they're not able to deal with him. So then that turn after that, he's a 16-16 trample, which is pretty ridiculous. Also, if you're playing other things with plus one, plus one counters, he works with them as well, so keep that in mind. Uh, next up is number two, which we'll have to see more of in the future, but it's Imposing Sovereign, one in the white for a 2-1. Uh, and creatures the opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Definitely a really good card against the aggro build. Uh, usually red, green, red, white, something like that. But um, just totally kill their aggressive abilities because red, white has a lot of small, hasty guys that get in. Usually they can play a ton of creatures in a turn, but with this, they'll all enter tapped, which is just awesome. And, uh, Keeps them also from blocking your guys, which is pretty nice. So I like this guy a lot. Um, I'll definitely be playing him. And I think he could definitely go in a 360 or 450, 540, something like that. And next we have the number one card. Let's see if you can guess what it is. It is Chandra Pyromancer. Master. A little weird of a name, but anyway. 2 and 2 red for 4 loyalty is always nice. Usually, the turn you play it will be at 5 loyalty. So, plus 1 Chandra Pyromaster deals 1 damage to target player and 1 damage to 
to up to one target creature that opponent controls, or that player controls. And that creature can't block this turn. So there's a lot of flexibility with this first ability. Obviously, you get to deal one damage to the player, and then also to the creature, which can eliminate one of their smaller creatures or one toughness creatures just really quickly. But there's also the fact that that creature can't block this turn, so if they have a giant creature that's just blocking every turn, or something with Death Touch or something like that, then you just totally kill that possibility and swing in. So pretty sweet. Uh, you can also deal damage to Planeswalkers, since it says target player. Um, second ability is zero, exile the top card of your library, you may play it this turn. Pretty sweet ability since green or red doesn't have a ton of card advantage as it is. So card advantage is always awesome as I've learned a lot in cube. And this one is not too bad of one. You get to take the top card of your library and play it. Uh, unfortunately it could be a land or something of course and if you've already had your land drop. You always want to uh, use this before your land drop unless you can play it turn four. but. Because if you had to exile one of your lands, it's kind of a bummer. But it just helps you get through your deck a lot faster and also helps you find whatever cards you're going to need in your deck. So, pretty sweet ability there. And the minus seven, you might be able to get to with her just because you're able to take out a few of their creatures, maybe. Not all the time, but sometimes you can. And with this, you can also help find some removal or something like that. But this one is minus seven, exile the top ten cards of your library, choose an instant or sorcery card, exile this way, and copy it three times. You may cast copies without paying their mana cost. That's obviously a game finisher. If you get three copies of any pain spell, just kills them. Like Lava Axe or something, which really isn't cute much, but um, just any other thing like that, or there can be some ridiculous things like this, like three upheavals or something like that which wouldn't really make much sense but at least it's some pretty cool interactions there won't usually get up to that ability but if you can you pretty much win so yeah I definitely like her first and second abilities definitely a good card red needed a few more um, two drop non-creature spells and yeah that's pretty much it so looking forward to M14 definitely a lot better than I thought it would be but yeah, uh, I won't be able to make it to the pre-release tomorrow, unfortunately, because I'm going to be leaving for Tahoe, but I'll be sure to pick up some packs and hopefully get some of these cards for my cube as well. So thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe, and keep watching for magic videos.